Hello folks and welcome to GD Microlearning. This is Dr. MCR and in this video I'm going to show you how to solve five GED test math questions. If we look at question one, it's asking you the following. It says that Bill rented a mover's truck at 10 a.m. and returned it at 3 p.m. He paid a total of $56.72. What was the rental cost per hour? So the first thing to ask is how many hours did he rent the truck for? And from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m., that would be five hours. And then we know that he paid a total of $56.72. So the way that you would set up your equation would be like this. You would say that 5x is equal to $56.72. Remember that those $56 were, was the total price, and then the 5 was the number of hours. And what we want to find out is the price per hour, which would be x. So what you would do is you would basically take that equation and you would solve for x. So 5x, you would divide by 5 on both sides, then uh, that cancels out on the left side and it leaves you with x is equal to $56.72 divided, uh, $56 divided by 5, which is going to equal $11.34. Let's say that you look at this problem and you have no idea how to solve it. So what can you do in this situation? Well, basically what you're going to do is you're going to take advantage of the answer options that they provide. So we know that he paid a total of $56.72 and he used the truck for five hours. So what you would do is you would just plug in the answers until you get the correct response. So if we look at the first one, we would multiply five hours times $13.12, which is the option that they give you. And your response would be $65. So that would be incorrect. Okay, because we said that the total is $56.72. Move on to option two. You would multiply five hours times $8.50. That gives you $42, which is also incorrect. So we cross that out. If we look at D, you would multiply five hours times $14. Gives you 70 bucks. Again, that is incorrect. Cross that option off. And then finally, C. If you multiply five hours times $11.34, it gives you the correct response, which is $56.72. Okay, so uh, this is a second way to solve that problem if you um, got stuck. Let's look at question two. So question two tells you, uh, asks you, what is the value of 45x minus 3y squared when x is equal to minus nine and y is equal to two? So what you have to do is you take those numbers and you basically plug them into your equation. So now it looks like this, 45 times minus nine minus three times two squared. And here, don't forget that in mathematical operations, we have to follow something known as order of operations. If you have any questions about this, I will leave a video um, at the end of this video so that you can review that. But essentially, uh, remember that you have to do things that are in parentheses first, followed by exponents, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. So here, the first thing that we would solve would be that exponent, so 2 squared. So when we do that, we end up with 45 times minus 9 minus 3 times 4. Okay, 2 squared is equal to 4. And that gives us minus 405 minus 12, which gives us a total of uh, negative 417. Let's move on to question number 3. Here they're telling you that James is planning a yoga retreat. He has a budget of $2,621 for renting a conference room at a spa and lunch for the participants. He expects 37 people will attend the uh, event, and the cost of renting the conference room is $315. So they're asking you which inequality below best describes how much money, X, he can spend on lunch for each participant. So first of all, um, what I like to do is I like to quickly get glance at the answers uh, that they provide and see if you can eliminate some of them. So 
They tell you in the question that we can spend exactly $2,621 or less. Okay, that's our budget. So if you use mathematical symbols, you would say less than or equal to $2,621. And if you look at the option for A and C, they're actually telling you more than or equal to $2,621. So you can Im immediately eliminate these two options because the budget said a maximum of $2,621. Okay, so let's just collect the data that we have. So we know that the budget is less than or equal to $2,621. We know that the meeting room is a fixed cost of $315 and that we have 37 participants. And what we have to find is X, which is the cost of lunch per participant. So the way that you would set up your inequality would be like this. You would say 37X plus 315 less than or equal 2,621. Remember, this last number is your budget. This middle number is the cost for the room and the 37 is the number of participants. And then you would simply um, multiply that by X, which is the cost of lunch per participant. So the correct answer would be D. Oops, looks like my battery is starting to run out. Um, okay, hopefully we'll be able to finish this. So question four tells you that um, Sally earns $300 per week plus a 7% commission rate on all the items she sells. If she sells $5,987 of merchandise this week, how much money will she take home total for this week? Okay, so the first thing is to find out where, what are the sources of income for Sally. So we know that her total earnings are her fixed weekly pay plus her commission rate. And her weekly pay is $300. And her commission rate is going to be $7 on everything she sells. Excuse me, 7% on everything she sells. So this week, she sold $5,987 worth of me merchandise. Multiply that by 7%, which is her commission rate, gives you $419.19. ,19. So her total take-home pay this week would be her weekly pay, $300, plus the commission that she made this week, which was $419.19. .19. Okay, so the correct answer would be C, 719 bucks. And the final question, question five, they tell you that Jim has $45 in his savings account and he makes a deposit as soon as he gets paid. This brings his account balance up to $90. And they're asking you by what percentage did the total amount of his account increase by as a result of his deposit. So they're asking you the percent change. The formula that you use is this. So percent change is the amount of change divided by the original amount multiplied by 100. And you will multiply by 100 because they're asking you for a percentage, okay? So that's why you multiply by 100. If you don't want to multiply by 100, you just have to remember to move your decimal point over at the end. Okay, so let's calculate the amount of change first. So the new balance in his account was $90, and you would uh, subtract that. You would subtract 45 from that, which was the original amount, and then divide by 45, which was the original amount. Multiply that by 100. That gives you 45 divided by 45, which just cancels out. So you end up with 1 times 100. So your answer would be 100% change or letter C. Okay, folks. Well, I hope you found that useful. If you did and you want more videos like this, please make sure to hit the subscribe button. As always, folks, stay positive and stay strong. I recommend that you do a little bit of work every day towards your GD. I know it gets hard if you have a job, if you have kids and whatever, but just keep making some progress. Thank you so much for your time. And as always, thanks for watching.